Today I'm using the Arbortech ball gouge to help me make a few wooden spoons. I'm using the ball gouge to hollow out the spoon. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you do, it's definitely a time saver. And for the materials, I'm using walnut and sapili offcuts that have been hanging around the shop. With the boards cut to width at two and a quarter inches, the next step is to cut the board to length. And I think anywhere between 10 and 13 is a good length for a spoon. So I'll make the cut here at 12 and a half. The thickness of the wood that I'm using is five quarter, and five quarter typically measures about an inch and a sixteenth. Next I'll measure and mark at a quarter of an inch, and three and three quarters of an inch. And these are reference lines that I want to stay within when I'm using the ball gouge. I'm also going to measure three quarters of an inch in from the front of the spoon on each side. and cut a 45 degree angle. Now I'll draw a line a quarter of an inch from the edge all around and these are reference lines to try not to go beyond those lines when I'm using the ball gouge. And I'll also make a mark at the center or close to the center. And so when I'm using the ball gouge I'm trying to kind of stay like this. I've got the workpiece clamped down and I'm ready to start using the ball gouge. If you've never used one of these before, definitely get some scrap wood, put in a little time practicing. The cutting tool can jump or bounce a little bit depending on the density of the wood or the direction of the grain, but it's really easy to control with just a little bit of practice. When I'm using the tool, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the tool. I'm just letting the, the tool do the work and being careful not to go any further than this pencil line here. When I'm near the front of the spoon, I want to be careful that the tool doesn't run and carve out the front. Also, it's good to know what direction the tool is cutting. In this case, the tool is spinning like this, so it's cutting down, which will avoid tear out near the front of the spoon. Towards the back of the spoon, the cutting tool is spinning in this direction and I'm getting kind of a, a choppy cut which could result in tear out. So at this point, I'm going to turn the workpiece around and start working on this side. I continue to rotate the workpiece as I carve the spoon to help maintain control and avoid tear out. Most of the carving is done. I've got a little bit of a high spot right here. And when I use the ball gouge, I'm using very light pressure. You can tell that sometimes the, the ball gouge wants to run on you. And so you're really not putting pressure on it. You just want to get that practice in before you start working on your workpiece. But once you get the hang of this, it definitely saves time. Okay, that's pretty good. The rest of the work I'll have to do with sandpaper. 
next cut will be on the bandsaw, and I've measured in and marked it three inches, and I'm going to just kind of draw a gentle kind of an arc. Next I'm going to kind of follow that angle. I'll measure in just about three quarters of an inch, maybe a little heavy, on each side and draw a line. Okay, so now we're starting to look like a spoon and I'm going to stick with the bandsaw for just a little bit longer and just eyeball it, cutting away the bulk of the material and getting it ready for its next step at the belt sander. I've got 60 grit paper in the belt sander. I've clamped it to my table and I'm ready to do the final shaping. And at this point, I'm just going for what I think looks good. No two spoons have to look exactly alike. Once I finish with the belt sander, I'll move on to an orbital sander with 80 grit paper and then eventually a palm sander with 120 grit. If you like this type of teaching video, I hope that you'll click on the link in the description to my Maker's Mob. I've made almost all of the furniture in my home, and with the help of my video tutorials and professional plans, I know that you can too. So I hope that you'll click on the link in the description, and I'll see you inside my Maker's Mob. For the finish, I'm using a food safe board wax by my friends at SoCal Woodshop. Well, I'm really happy with the way these spoons turned out. The ball gouge definitely does take a little bit of getting used to, and I would say the last spoon that I made is probably better than the first one. So it's like anything, practice makes perfect. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you're not following me on Instagram, I hope that you'll check me out over there. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.